In this video, I will show you how you can get from this to that. So let's start with organizing your desktop's content, where we need to take care of four main areas that are the files and folders on your desktop, the start menu, the taskbar, and the notification center. No worries, even though I'm doing this on Windows 10, the same or a very similar approach can be applied to Windows 11 or an Apple Mac. So even if your desktop does not look like this, I assume you have at least one file, folder or program shortcut on your desktop. Now, before cleaning it up, you need to decide whether you want to follow a clean desktop policy or not. Having a clean desktop would mean that you have basically nothing or almost nothing on your desktop. And that's actually what I love and would recommend because it doesn't distract you from your actual work and always gives you the peace of mind of having everything organized. This, however, means that you need to get rid of almost everything that is currently on your desktop. I recommend filing all of your documents and folders, so moving them wherever they fit in your file management system. Anything else, which should mainly be program shortcuts, can be deleted or just hidden by right-clicking on the desktop, going to View and unchecking the Show Desktop icons. No worries, you can always go to your programs via the taskbar or the start menu by pressing the Windows key and typing the program you are looking for. Even though I would consider myself following a clean desktop policy, I still keep the recycle bin on the desktop as well as some files that I'm currently using more or less using the desktop as a buffer area. As long as I need those files regularly, I keep them on the desktop in a separate folder. But as soon as I don't anymore, I will either delete or file them. That way, I believe I'm using the desktop most practically. So as a tool to work with and store currently relevant files for quick access, but also to make sure it's not getting distracting and a document dump. If you don't want to follow a clean desktop policy for whatever reason, you might still want to keep your desktop organized with as few icons and documents as possible. For example, if you're just temporarily keeping documents on your desktop for certain projects or documents that need to be filed, you could either use dedicated space on your desktop to put those documents or just create very discrete folders without a name and explicit icon where you put, for example, all the documents that you still need to file. To create such a folder, just right-click on your desktop and click New Folder. Whilst the name of the folder is still highlighted, press Alt and 255 on your keyboard and release Alt and press Enter. This, however, only works with a separate number pad and not, for example, with the keyboard of your laptop. To change the icon, do a right-click on the folder, go to Properties, Customize, Change Icon and select one that is rather discreet such as one of those arrows. You can change the size of your desktop icons by pressing Ctrl and scrolling up or down with your mouse. Looking at your start menu, you might also have the feeling it just shows you a random list of apps and information. To change that, do a right click on your taskbar and go to taskbar settings and then to start. I recommend showing just the most used apps in the same way that we have just seen like a window pop-up or showing the start menu full screen if you prefer that. In both cases, you can now tailor the apps that are pinned to the start menu. Do a right click and select unpin from start to get rid of the ones you don't like in this view or go to all apps and click on the ones you would like to pin and select this again by right click. Now on your start menu, you can drag and drop your icons, resize them, rename individual sections and move them up or down. If you want to do a quick search for an app that is not pinned to your start menu or taskbar, I recommend pressing the Windows key and typing in whatever you're looking for. The taskbar is another rather neglected area to organize, but is making a huge impact on how your desktop will look and feel. Start cleaning your taskbar by reviewing all the icons you have there and thinking about if you really need them. I recommend only keeping the ones you need very often and getting rid of the others by right-clicking and choosing to unpin from the taskbar. Then you should get rid of all the unnecessary icons and information that are just clogging your taskbar. Do a right-click on the taskbar and deselect to show the Cortana, task view or keyboard button or the people on the taskbar. You can also turn off news and interest 
and hide the search button, which is easily replaced, as I already mentioned, by just pressing the Windows key and then searching for whatever you need. To further streamline your taskbar, do another right-click and go to Taskbar Settings. There you can choose to show only small taskbar icons, which makes sense if you have pinned so many, so they won't take up that much space. You can also choose to automatically hide your taskbar if you would like to, but I would not recommend it for now. If you are using a laptop or a regular monitor, I recommend keeping the location of your taskbar at the bottom. Whereas when you're using a widescreen monitor, it might make sense to put it on the left of your screen. This, however, is not possible in Windows 11. I also like to have my taskbar icons centered at the bottom when working on my laptop or centered left when working on my ultra widescreen monitor. To center them without downloading any third-party software, just do a right-click on the taskbar and click Toolbar and Links. For the next step, you need to have your toolbar unlocked. So either that's already the case or again, do that via a right click on your toolbar and select Unlock Toolbar. Now drag the newly created links prompt via the handlebar towards your toolbar apps until they are all squeezed and appear again on the other side of the toolbar. Then right click on links and uncheck show title and show name. After having moved the taskbar to the center where you would wanna have it, lock it again. You center your taskbar icons a lot easier as well as make it look even better with a simple third-party solution that I will introduce in just a second before having organized the remaining icons on the taskbar. They usually show some other minor functions like your speaker symbol and settings, Wi-Fi, OneDrive or any other app that is running in the background. You can either just group all of them and hide them by a drag and drop or decide not to show them at all. Do that by going to the taskbar settings and scroll down to the notification area. Here you can choose to select which icons shall appear on the taskbar and which should be turned on or off. I personally like to just move them to the hidden folder instead of not showing them at all. Having organized your content, let's go one step further and improve the aesthetics of your desktop to make it look like this. By finalizing the looks of your taskbar, setting the right background and color scheme. We've already done a good job in organizing your taskbar, but now it will get the final touches with a third-party solution called Taskbar X, which I recommend when you're using Windows 10 or Rounded TB, which I recommend when you're using Windows 11. You will find all those links down in the video description, just like the one to my newsletter. So make sure to subscribe and get even more practical office organization and productivity tips straight to your inbox. Since I'm still using Windows 10, I will go ahead with Taskbar X, which you can download for $1.99 via the Windows Play Store or for free by downloading the portable SIP on the homepage. Once downloaded, you need to unzip it, move it to your documents folder and then execute the file. And then you can open the Taskbar X configurator that lets you configure how your taskbar looks. There you have quite a few nice options, for example, to center your taskbar if you've not already done it, change its style and color, or even hide the start button or tray area with the notifications. Having set your desired look, let's deal with your desktop background. Maybe you have seen that there are moving wallpapers out there, for example, raindrops dripping down a window or stars moving in the atmosphere. That might look quite nice for a moment, but if there's no option to stop the animation whilst working in a program or gaming, I think it's a bit distracting and also has a negative performance impact on your computer. That's why I would recommend using a static wallpaper. For a neat look and feel, I recommend not choosing a picture of your dog or cat or one of your loved ones because they are often not high quality enough and also they're usually quite lively with a lot of colors and things going on. Rather go for a clean, maybe abstract wallpaper with not too many colors. You can find them either by Googling, using different apps or searching stock photo websites like pexels.com, which I personally like very much. Make sure to download a high quality picture, ideally in 4K to make sure it's not pixelated or even larger that it fits the size of your screen if you're working with an ultra wide monitor. Having downloaded a suitable picture, do right click and choose to set it as a desktop background. Now that you know which style and colors your desktop background has, you can tailor the color scheme of Windows. 
Do that by going to Taskbar Settings again and navigating to Colors. The first choice you want to make is if you want to use the light or the dark mode for Windows, which will change, for example, the default color of your taskbar if you have not changed it with Taskbar X beforehand. Then you can choose the default app mode to either light or dark. This will determine, for example, if window pop-ups will appear light or dark. I personally prefer having Windows mode set to dark and app mode set to light. But that's totally up to you and also depends on how your background is looking like. Further down, you can choose the accent color that will be shown, for example, for any highlights, such as turned on toggle bars or when going to the start menu and selecting your pinned or all apps. I usually choose this to match the overall look and feel in combination with my wallpaper. And with that, you're pretty much set. But maybe you have seen other tutorials about further customizing your desktop, for example, with the widgets or other third-party software. You can do that, but I would not recommend it, having made rather negative experiences, such as that it had performance issues or glitches with other programs that I was using back then. But in any case, now that your desktop is super clean and organized, let's go back to your documents and photos that we have filed in the very first step. Do you think they are already as organized and structured as your desktop? I doubt it, because there is always something to improve. So watch this video next, where I will show you how to manage your files and make them just as organized as your desktop.